today we have a panel. The topic is choosing an online platform and selling online. Uh, four Missouri farmers are here to share their stories and what platform they're using and um, how is it working for them. Um, I asked, I am not going to go into a lot of details with their bios because I did send that earlier. I'm just going to briefly, and I don't want to spend too much time on that, so I'm going to briefly mention uh, a little bit about them, but then uh, your, uh, you can read more details about each farm in those bios we sent earlier today. Um, please use the chat to write any questions you may have. Once they're done, we're going to go ahead and have a Q&A, um, and each presenter will have about 15 minutes, and um, when, we're, when they're done, we'll go into the, the Q&A at the end. And um, the other thing I want to thank also, first thank all the, uh, the presenters and also uh, the Sustainable Agriculture Research and Education and the Web City Farmers Market, since they, they are the, our partners in this, we're collaborating with them to put this panel together. Um, and also my co-hosts, uh, Debbie Kelly and Rob Balick, they're both uh, horticulture specialists in the MU Extension. And Jeff Sambarski and Pam Dutzman are also uh, co-hosting this and they are in community development um, in MU Extension. So with that, I'm going to have first Curtis get started. Um, he represents Millsap Farms. Uh, he's in the Springfield area in south, uh, kind of south central Missouri. Um, sustainable, uh, non-certified organic vegetables and flowers is what uh, basically they produce at the farm, but he can add more if I got that wrong. And there is a mistake in the, sl in the slide that we're using as a background because the platform that he's using is Harvey. So he's going to be discussing that platform. And hopefully this, um, uh, pla this uh, 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 webinar can help you as a farmer decide uh, which platform you may want to go with if you're deciding that you want to go online. Uh, also, if, um, if you are still in that decision making uh, situation where you don't know if you should go online, they should be able to discuss some of the pros and cons that they have with uh, having an online platform selling directly to the, to the consumers. So with that, I'm going to let Curtis get started. And um, you want to share your screen? Uh oh. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay, sorry, I lost you for just a second. So uh, yeah, so I'm Curtis Millsap, Millsap Farm. Um, I have, a, uh, we have about a two acre market garden and, uh, and basically what we do is um, uh, mostly CSA, but we also do a farmer's market and we do a, uh, a uh, couple of different uh, outlets. And then this spring we thought, well, for a while we've been looking, looking at uh, doing some more online sales. And uh, we, so in January of this year, uh, we started doing, uh, we started pursuing online sales through barn to door. And so my story is actually a little bit more complicated than, than what I initially, uh, so we'd use barn to door. We've been using Harvey longer. We used to use Small Farm Central. And you, I think, uh, can everybody see this, my screen now? I have a, a should say, say uh, up in the yes. top left corner. Yeah, good. Okay. Yeah, we can see it. Mm -hmm. Good, good. So, so we use Harvey to run our, C our CSA, our Community Supported Agriculture Program, and we have done that for the last two seasons. This will be our third year using Harvey. And we used Barn to Door from January until, uh, until May of this year to do some online sales. And before that, we were using Small Farm Central, which is sort of the predecessor, well, it's exactly the predecessor of Harvey. Um, Small Farm Central was started by Simon Huntley to create online solutions for farmers looking to do mostly CSA sales, but then there were also utilities within that that allowed us to do a la carte sales. And so we use that quite a bit, especially for restaurant sales for many years, I guess four or five years. And, um, and then, uh, so, so I'm going to give kind of a, a overview of our journey through this with details, uh, particularly pertaining to Harvey, which currently is, is our platform and the, I think our favorite platform in terms of, um, well, several criteria. Uh, so anyway, um, 
we'll, we'll run through this, this chart real quick. Um, this will be available later as well, but, uh, but this kind of runs through our experience fairly quickly. Uh, so Harvey and Barn to Door, cost-wise, Harvey's pretty expensive. It's 7% of sales plus 3% for credit card fees. So if people pay you with a check or cash, they don't get that 3%, but the 7% still goes to Harvey. Any sales that are run through Harvey go uh, get to take that 7%. Um, and we'll get into a little bit of what they get and what we get in exchange for that 7%, why I'm willing to pay that. But um, I was, that, I'll say up front, that was a big chunk of money. Um, and it still seems like a big chunk of money, but it has, um, I think it's worked out for us. Uh, barn to door is credit card fees plus an approximate yearly fee of $1,000. Uh, as I mentioned, there's several tiers of service there and I don't really know we're in the mid tier. And I think you can go a little higher than that. I think you can go a little lower than that. Um, Cost-wise, Barnador seems to be about the cheapest option out there uh, from the sort of available services that I've seen. Um, farmer support. Um, Harvey has always been excellent. Um, they've been very good at, at being reactive, uh, being uh, not reactive, but, uh, but uh, responsive to farmer needs. Um, we have good training sessions. There's options to have a weekly meeting. Uh, just really been good. Um, Barn to Door also did a good job of onboarding. They assign an agent to you who's your onboarding agent. Um, the only frustrating part I found in that process was that uh, finding, um, finding, getting a hold of them more than once a week was difficult. So that was, that was a challenge uh, because we were really kind of itching to get started and it took us about four to five weeks before we could really start our online store. Um, but you know that, that is what it is. Uh, once it was up and going, it worked fine. Uh, customer support. Um, something I didn't mention on Harvey, and I think this is true across the board right now, all these uh, platforms are really struggling to keep up with the demand. Uh, there's so much in new interest in online sales and in farm sales that most of these guys are having a really hard time um, meeting the demand for customer service. Um, Harvey is doing a, a, a striving greatly. I think they've put on five or six new customer service uh, members in the last two months. Uh, they're really working hard at, at, uh, at keeping up, but still it's, they're falling, they're behind. Um, I found some of the same things with, uh, with Barn to Door. Um, but I should mention with Harvey, which is my, ex my longer experience, we've been doing this now, like I said, two and a half years, um, that's, that's new. Harvey always has been really fast on response. Um, they were always uh, Johnny on the spot. And, and actually that was part of what I felt like I paid them to do. And that's part of what they acknowledged we, they were getting paid to do was they took about 90% of the email sort of service request exchanges that I had to do off of my plate. And that was worth quite a bit to me. It took a lot of time, um, you know, left me with much more time to do what I do best, which is grow and get in the field and do that sort of thing, and a lot less time doing email exchanges with customers. So that was good. Um, on, the, uh, on the other end of it, with, the, uh, with Barn to Door, I don't feel like I know enough to say with authority how their customer service was, mostly because our turnaround on those things was so quick that it was hard to know how we were actually doing. And um, meaning like orders that were placed on Monday were being filled and, and delivered on Friday or Saturday. And so there's not a lot of time in there to resolve customer service issues. Uh, customer interface, um, a bit clunky on the Harvey end. Um, Harvey's design has never been their strong point. Functionality has always been good. So if you can figure it out, it can do almost anything, but it's not necessarily intuitive as to how to go about that. Um, Barn to door is slick. Barn to Door's stated mission is to make sale, produce sales as easy as Amazon, and they have really done a pretty pretty good job of this from the customer end. However, here we get the farmer interface. Um, you know, Harvey uh, was initially not very farmer. Uh, well, it was just it was it was like most startups. There were a lot of gaps still to be filled. But in the three years that we've been using them, they've improved dramatically. And it's really, it's, it's a pretty smooth platform from the farmer end of things. Uh, barn to door, not so much. Um, it's very frustrating. Um, I, I think that, uh, yeah, I won't go into that too much detail. You'll get this chart. Uh, fulfillment, this is where you really start to see a huge distinction. Um, Harvey nails this. 
reports, delivery routing, label printing. Um, it's just everything works really well together. When you want to sell something, show where it's going, who's getting it, make a label for it, uh, you know, know how much you're making for that, how much is being sold for, et cetera. All that stuff is really right at your fingertips. Um, now, I should be clear, it's specifically a CSA platform, so it's all within that context. Uh, Barn to Door was a train wreck as far as fulfillment goes. Uh, we could not print labels, can't print pick lists for multiple days, can't print, um, uh, all, well, just a lot, of, a lot of real big gaps. Possibly we had not realized how spoiled we were with farm, uh, Small Farm Central and then Harvey. Um, they just really understand this part of it extremely well. And, um, and so that was, that was a big deal. And then responsiveness. You know, I want to work with somebody who uh, is listening to my needs and willing to work with me and change and so on. Uh, and I have found that to be the case with Harvey. I've not found that to be the case with Barn to Door. Again, only with them for four or five months. And uh, so, you know, I understand our experience was limited, but during that time it was, it was frustrating. Um, so very briefly, I want to show um, how, the, uh, how the Harvey platform, uh, just kind of really a very simple version of how it works. But this is the Harvey interface. Um, we're gonna look at a delivery that we're gonna make on, um, uh, well, this, so this will be actually tomorrow's CSA delivery. And the way Harvey works is we put in product. So you can see here, the category is estimated harvest. Then we create a harvest for each week. And then we enter items. Now we copy these over so we don't have to create new uh, items and quantities each week, but we do edit the, the quantities, of course. And so for example, we've got here salad mix from Box Turtle Farms. We're gonna offer 99 bags at 375. And then you can see over here how much uh, value that's gonna put into the share. And you take all these items, you add them up, and down at the bottom, this is one of my favorite things about Harvey, um, and I sure hope I, yeah, there we can see it right there in the bottom right corner. I hope you all can see that. It may be, for some of you, it may be hidden behind your gallery view uh, if you're using your, your gallery view on, on, uh, on Zoom. But down in the bottom right corner, you should be able to see my target value, which is $3,192. That's how much produce I have pre-sold through the CSA for Tuesday. My estimated value is 4,548. That means that's how much produce I have offered this week to, uh, to my members. And so that tells me uh, a really valuable number, which is I am basically uh, $1,300 over value. I, I'm offering $1,300 more uh, of vegetables than what my customers, what I've committed to my customers. Uh, and that's a really useful number. And I find this to be, of, if, of all the things that, in a very brief uh, sharing of Harvey, of all the things that add value to me, this is the biggest one because I can look at this number every week and say, how are we doing? Are we serving our CSA really well? Are we providing them with lots of value? And now this, the 4,500 is not what's going out. I'm only sending out the 30, 3,100, but I know that I have that extra capacity. And so I don't uh, start getting nervous about how I'm gonna fill those, ba fill those baskets uh, because I can see here that I'm, full, I'm able to fill them uh, pretty readily and have some slack in the system. So again, I apologize, it's a very brief format, so I can't uh, do it justice probably. But, uh, but all that to say, Harvey has been really, really useful for us. It's been a great tool. And uh, it doesn't do a la carte online sales yet. There's sort of a, a, sort of a gray area that's maybe a, almost a hybrid system of that, but it doesn't quite do that yet. It's in the works, I'd say within the next few months that will be available. Uh, but as far as the CSA system, online sales and all that, I think it's, uh, I think it's been really fantastic for us. I believe that I am really close to the end of my time. Is that correct, Maria? Correct. Okay, so do we have, uh, is this the time for questions? No, we're gonna do questions all, all at once at the end. Oh, okay, all right. Well, in that case, I will, I'll go two more minutes here and I will say, um, the other really cool thing about Harvey, and, and I think this is cool about all sorts of online sales, is it takes away, for CSA, for a long time, I always had to think in large units. If I'm gonna have, my, my CSA runs about uh, 175 members in the summertime. And so if I'm gonna do uh, bok choy, for example, you can see on my screen here, then historically I would have thought, well, I need to have 175 bok choy because I need to make sure everybody gets a bok choy. 
Um, the Harvey system allows me to not do that. It allows me to offer 25 heads, as you see here on the list, because that's what we have available in the, in the field right now. But those 25 heads still get distributed out to my CSA members because uh, they can they can see, um, I mean, if they want them, they get them in their box. If they can trade them in, they can move them out. Um, and that's the, that's the really, from a farmer end of things, the really fantastic part of, of, uh, of Harvey is that we can use up small quantities of things and still use them in a CSA system. And I, I don't know, I mean, people who haven't done CSA, that may not make a whole lot of sense uh, why that's so valuable. But to me, it's a tremendous value. I no longer have to have, to have these, you know, fennel, for example, I don't really want to grow uh, 175 heads of fennel a week to meet my CSA demand, which my CSA demand really is probably maybe 10 heads of fennel a week, but I want to make sure that it's available at times. Instead, I can just grow a small bed of fennel and I can sell them as I have them available. I can offer them to my CSA members. And um, it also has, it's pr so what that translates into is actually a lot of extra income as well, because even things like rosemary and tarragon and thyme, which are these odd little things that you go, well, how many of those can I really sell? how many do I want to put it into CSA shares? Um, I no longer worry about that. I'm able just to offer them. And if people want them, they get them. And if they don't want them, they don't have to take them. But so herbs for us last year turned into several thousand dollars worth of sales that in the past we would have, if we had put that many herbs into people's boxes, we would have felt like we were pushing that onto them. And now we feel like we're just giving them a really cool choice that they can take, you know, lemon basil if they want to. Um, they can have peppermint this week if they want it, but we're not pushing it down their throats. So, uh, so those are kind of two big things on Harvey that I, I would, I would want to highlight. Um, there's a lot of really good information out there on Harvey. And so if you're, if it's something you're interested in, then, um, you know, feel free to reach out. We, I know we have some online, um, I mean, some phone mentoring that's going to go with this, uh, this seminar or workshop as well. And so if that's something somebody wants to talk to me about, I'm glad to do that. So, and with that, I think I have just used up all my time, Maria. Yeah, thank you so much, uh, Curtis. Could you unshare your screen so I can go ahead and... and I will try um, to do that. <laughs> <laughs> the, we are, actually, I was going to mention that at the end, that um, these uh, four farmers are going to be available for one-on-one -on -one, uh, consultations. We will send that information after this seminar, um, and you'll get more details. Everybody, each one of them has committed um, uh, 20 hours of their time total, not 20 to each uh, farmer they, they work with, but that they can spend uh, helping other farmers if they have specific questions later on. So with that, I'm going to have uh, Karen Scott. Uh, Karen is from Oakwoods Farm, and um, she's in Granby, Missouri, and uh, she has sustainable, non-certified organic vegetables and herbs and beef cows, meat goats, and chickens on a rotational grazing. So she, her online platform is Square. So with that, I'm gonna let um, Karen go. You're good to go, Karen. Oh, okay. Um, hello, I'm Karen Scott. Uh, actually, my screen looks kind of funny. I think it looks good on our end. Oh. Okay, all right. Um, my husband and I farm on 62 acres, uh, just north of Granby and south of Joplin. Um, we have less than an acre in year-round vegetable production. We are a very small farm. Um, we have two part-timers um, and then uh, volunteers that help us just in the high season. Um, I started to sell online in 2017, actually as an alternative to CSA. So all of those things that Curtis was talking about, I struggled with and, and didn't have a system to overcome those things. I wanted my customers to be able to um, select what they want uh, while still having the convenience of uh, picking up their, their order at select locations. Um, and I'm also less stressed over accepting money uh, up front uh, and the possibility that I might not be able to deliver. Um, and then I, uh, 
was always stressed over making sure that customers didn't get the same um, uh, thing every week, week after week after week, you know, just 10 pounds of zucchini, so on and so forth. Uh, I, um, with the arrival of COVID, uh, I was really, really happy that uh, we had an online uh, platform. Uh, we started that in 2017. Um, one of my markets here closed uh, and was open to curbside only. And so those people, they, they, that was the only way that they were going to be able to get uh, produce uh, was online. So our sales, actually 30% uh, of our sales now are online because I, I believe that market is closed and just doing curbside. Um, we sell direct to customers at uh, Web City Farmers Market and Joplin Empire Market as well as from here on the farm. Um, both of those both of those markets are using local line uh, and they're they're serving as aggregators for all of the vendors at those markets. Um, I, on the other hand, uh, I, I do participate in that, uh, but I'm using Square. Um, I learned about Square uh, because we, you know, we're all familiar with the, the Square readers. Um, and using the reader and then that just led me to uh, their uh, online store capabilities. Um, I looked at, at other options uh, for online. I looked at Google Forms, um, uh, Shopify, Squarespace, um, uh, local line. Local line is pretty expensive. I think it's, it's $49.99 um, to, to uh, set up an online store there. Um, I looked at adding uh, e-commerce to my uh, WordPress website. Um, I, I wanted something that was going to be free, first of all, or low cost and uncomplicated. Uh, with Square, the, the basic functionality is free. Um, there, there's a, uh, let's see if I can share my screen. Maria, can I share my screen? Yes, go ahead. Now you should be able to. If you go down at the bottom of the of your Zoom screen, there should be a share screen option, and there you should be able to. Hmm. Let's see here. It's it's sharing now. Okay, great. Okay. It is sharing now, Karen. Okay, that's not the one that I wanted to share. <laughs> so go, go ahead and unshare it and then select the uh, an, another. Okay. Okay, so now you can see that. Um, so the, the basic functionality is free and it is very basic. So you can, I can set up my store here. Um, it, it's very easy to add products to this. Uh, it now has the capability uh, to uh, select pickup locations. So I have a natural store, Web City, Empire, and you can pick up here at the farm. And then you have the capability of ordering. Um, I uh, have not updated my inventory for the week, but uh, you can just, you can go in and uh, select an item and add it to your cart. It's kind of clunky and slow. Um, but again, uh, with, with free comes um, uh, not a lot of the, you know, slick um, stuff already put together for you. Uh, but it was fairly easy to learn. Um, it calculates sales tax and uh, credit card processing fees. It does, you can enter an inventory. So as soon as you run out, um, 
it's that item is no longer for sale so you can't oversell um, it connects to Instagram uh, and uh, you can upgrade to get other functionality there's uh, uh, canned marketing campaigns for $15 a month or you can add, even add payroll for $29 a month but we don't use any of those options um, The, the square card reader is free and we do use that uh, functionality at the market. Um, the transaction fee, so the only, of course there's a transaction fee, it's 2.6% of the sale plus uh, 10 cents. So you know, that's fairly standard. Um, the, the cons again to using this is there, there, there uh, is no direct support. So if you run into a problem, it's really, really hard to get help. Uh, but I rarely run into problems. Um, there's a, an online community out there um, that you can go to, uh, to to get help with Square. Um, I use MailChimp for my marketing, uh, and I know uh, some packages have the, that email marketing functionality within them, but I just use MailChimp. Um, Uh, really, that's all there is to it. Oh, uh, it does have reporting capabilities, uh, and that's what we were looking at. Uh, there is no inventory versus sales reports, which um, it, it will send me an email if I run low, but it would be kind of nice just to, to be able to, to look and see what your inventory level is versus what your sales are. Um, you can get uh, sales reports uh, or item reports, which we use as a pick list. Um, label printing capability. I, it doesn't have label printing capability. Again, uh, it's, uh, it's pretty basic. It's pretty basic. It does work for our small farm. Um, I'm really happy we had it in place again with, with COVID. Um, and I, I plan to stay with this. I really do. Uh, again, it's a, a simple, easy to use. Uh, we're not a large farm, it's very, uh, so it's very easy for us to manage. All right, so are and you that's, uh, that's all. I will need you to unshare your screen again. That Am I what? To unshare your screen. If you could do that for me. At, go at the bottom. Okay, thank you so much. All right, thank you, Karen. Um, okay, next we have Greg and Nancy Rasmussen and they are in um, Sunny Lane Farm. They are in Lockwood, Missouri, um, and they do pasture-raised broiler chickens, grass-fed beef, cattle, and sheep, and they are, their online platform is Grace Cart. And so with that, I think they can get started. Let's see if I can find them here. Greg and Nancy, are you ready? Yes. Okay, you want to put your video on? You don't have any screen to share, correct? Correct. Okay, so I'm going to let you go. Go ahead. Hello. Um, this is Greg and Nancy Rasmussen, and we are going to go about this a little bit differently than the other presenters because uh, one of the points that Maria wanted us to touch on was farm markets and you know the which way you want to go do you want to go farm market do you want to go small restaurants on the farm or with grace cart you know which is an online uh thing and so i'm going to approach it from that uh standpoint a little bit more than the others did and also the covid experience with this and so my husband, Greg, and I uh, run Sunny Lane Farm in Southwest Missouri near Lockwood. 
and we started back in 2004 direct marketing our products and we would like to you know just go into the details of Grace Cart more in the question and answer session because if you research on Grace Cart it is so user friendly that they will answer a lot of the questions for you and at your own speed um, where we got the idea for this or Greg did the Stockman Grass Farmer is a publication that we just very, very highly respect. And any of you in the sustainable um, field of farming will know the name Joel Salatin, and he works extensively with them. And the research that they've done indicates that about 80% of your shop shoppers are looking for farm products, and they're going to use the internet now to help them locate the items they want and to find the places to purchase that item. Now, this is an amazing trend in shopping patterns and we wanted to be a part of it. Um, back when we started 16 years ago, we began selling at farm markets, small restaurants, natural food stores. In our area, that was the most effective way for most farmers to sell their product. And with farm markets, they were our main focus. We sold at several different markets of varying sizes over the years, and we attended several markets a week. And that was an exhausting schedule, as my husband will tell you, because he did most of the work and I got most of the glory just going to market and selling it. So that being said, um, we decided to only cut back. We're only doing two markets a week now, and we really appreciate these two markets or their management and customer base. Farm markets are very popular and we enjoy being a part of them. We also do some selling from the farm. We utilize Facebook, word of mouth, telephone, texts, and emails to receive orders. And we also have implemented online, implemented online sales just recently. The markets and the other ways to sell our products consumed a large portion of our time and we knew that internet market sales could be a complement to our business. So about a year ago, Greg began researching ways to sell online and he looked at several different options and he finally chose the business site for us that was created by Seven Sons Farms and it is called Gray's Cart. This site is recommended by the Stockman Grass Farmer Research also. And since we direct market meat mainly, and we do uh, pork also. Um, since we direct market meat also, this is you know, geared uh, quite a bit to meat uh, vendors. And this is an e-commerce site created by farmers to get small farmers introduced to internet sales. It's really user-friendly, teaches you how to maximize your time and your sales with a step-by-step -step guide. It helps the farm business to efficiently market their product with the auction for expansion to a level that will be comfortable for each individual farm. There is availability with this site to co-op your sales, take training sessions, talk with other customers and customer service. We like Grace Cart for many reasons, including the ability to set up the program and let the computer coordinate all aspects of our online sale. As we go into the question and answer portion of the session, we can field questions in more detail like about that site, like I said. Our business plan was to get the site set up before high season, which is now, and proceed slowly with implementing it while concentrating on our other avenues of sale. Though other family members help out when they're in the area, we rely heavily on our son Michael for tech support. Since spring and summer are high season for product sales, and we plan to focus on our online sales more this coming fall and winter, we weren't utilizing them as much as we should have been. This timeline would also give us time to see how we adapted to the online agenda for sales, and it would give us the opportunity to kind of tweak things that needed improvement. Needless to say, COVID-19 changed up our plans greatly. The planned timeline was no longer in effect. Our main market, Web City, Missouri, began taking online orders through their website and giving the orders to us to fill and drop at market for distribution by market staff. This was due to customers not feeling comfortable with shopping in person during COVID 
and it gave the consumer the ability to drive to a pickup point at market, be handed their order without leaving their vehicle. However, this created a burden on the staff and the vendors, but it also kept our customer base strong and was greatly appreciated. The Web City Market continued to maintain regular hours for those customers still wanting the experience of doing their shopping at the market site, and they implemented safety precautions for the vendors and shoppers. The other markets we attend are not year-round markets as the Web City Market is. So the Nevada Vernon County Market just delayed opening of their market season and will use safety precautions. And we will briefly um, touch on what has worked for us on the sales platform when we go to the pros and cons um, of selling, you know, from the farm by market phone, email, text, Facebook. But keep in mind that we are new to the online experience and that our guideline for implementation of the online sales was altered by taking time dealing with COVID. We are confident, however, that we have chosen a very effective platform in choosing the Gray, Gray site website for Grace Cart website for our online sales. Um, please research this site and you think you'll be amazed at how useful it is in your journey to selling your product via the internet. And it is very much geared to farmers. Many of the requirements needed for farm market or online sales will apply to anyone wanting to do um, online sales. So bear with me as I go through a few of them as you want to have as many of these requirements in place as possible when you begin your online sales. Please also keep in mind that it's important to make your business agenda fit your lifestyle. You should have one that is unique to your farm. What works for one farm may not work for yours. It is important to choose a marketing style that keeps you passionate about the product you offer and allows you the ability to have the time to manage and enjoy your farm while earning income from it. With that in mind, our experiences over the years might help you decide what will work for you and may save you time, as well as give you some tips on implementing your farm plan. Farm markets are a very important marketing tool and we love being able to visit with our customers. We have learned a lot from them and we hope they have learned a lot from us about why we believe in sustainable farming. Many of our customers feel like family now. Farm markets do, however, require a big investment in time and expense. The application process begins well before coming to market, requires an application fee, and sometimes an inspection of your farm. Your product must meet Missouri Department of Agriculture guidelines as well as complying with local health department regulations. If you sell meats, you must set up in advance your process dates, which are not always easy to obtain. You cannot just call and expect to get a process date when it's convenient for you. Planning birthing dates for your livestock or purchase dates for your livestock is important. The birthing dates or order dates must line up with the time your livestock is ready to harvest and the process date for that. You need to have a market ready for sale of your product when it is processed. A little planning and research is essential, essential to successfully bringing a product to the customer. Although raising the livestock is fulfilling, it is of no use in doing so if you have no place to process, process or sell it. You will need to consider a freezer system for storage of your meat products on the farm, you will need a trailer and freezers to carry your meat products to the market or delivery sites. The freezers must meet local health department guidelines. A generator that meets noise volume restrictions is essential and usually a long extension cord for use at markets where electric is available. And this will apply to your pickup points and stuff too if you do you know, the online sales, which is why I'm touching on this. Also consider the insurance needed for sale of your product to the consumer. Expect, expect to process only at state or federal plants as a label stating that your meat is for resale is required. Sometimes your farm will be inspected by the Department of Ag to ensure that proper safety guidelines are being met. And this is a value, valuable component for distributing a safe product. You will be required to pay sales tax, so a permit has to be applied for. 
the sales tax rate will vary with location, but be sure to use the food tax for the particular area rather than the regular tax as there is quite a difference. Many of the things that apply to farm markets will also apply to your on farm sales and your internet sales. Keep in mind online sales try to on farm sales try to discourage people from coming without an appointment because unless you have several employees, this can be quite time consuming. Though you appreciate the sale and you appreciate the customer and getting to visit with them, it is difficult to stop farm work, get cleaned up, fill the order, and visit with the customer when you are in the middle of a job on the farm. We have scheduled farm tours at various times and have really enjoyed them, in addition to liking the opportunity to visit with people coming to the farm to purchase from them. So regardless of the type of sales you choose, they will require coordination of effort as to the need to assure product availability before confirming an order. Our Grace Cart site is extremely helpful with this and eliminates much of the time that we would have spent. While all of these considerations may seem overwhelming, they do not need to be. We have found that everyone is usually willing to give you a friendly hand. Networking is a great asset and it will carry you through many situations in which you are experiencing a need for help or advice. Remember, another very valuable asset will be your local University of Missouri Extension office. And with that being said, I will turn this back to Maria. Thank you so much, Karen. I appreciate the MU Extension mentioned there. <laughs> so with that, we have uh, so one second, our next presenter is Liz Grasnack, and she is from Happy Hollow Farm in the Columbia, Missouri area. And uh, she has uh, USDA organic vegetables, fruits, eggs, and flowers. Um, and her online platform is from a local company actually called May Create Design. And I understand it was custom design and maybe she want to uh, just specify that. And with that, I'm going to get, let uh, this go. I have unshared my screen list, so you're ready to go. Can everybody hear me? Can yes. you hear me? We can, we can hear you. Okay, great. All right, and I'm going to click on unshare or share my screen here. Okay, so you can hear me, Maria, just confirming? Yes. Okay, great. So uh, very briefly, a little bit about me. Uh, I run a, about seven, six and a half to seven acre certified organic uh, farm in Northern Monotau County. This is my 10th year farming full time. Um, I started out initially just uh, with CSA and then slowly added farmers markets and wholesale sales and then um, some restaurants and a grocery store. Um, the interest in CSA this year exploded in April, which for a vegetable farm that started you know, 90% of my crops that I was going to need for the first six months of the season back in February, um, I was not quite prepared for the massive increase in interest in, in folks wanting to join the CSA um, just because of, you know, we have to start our, our things so far in advance. Um, so I had to actually put a cap on the number of people that I would, uh, that I let join in April. Um, because I was afraid that I wasn't going to have enough for them. Um, even with the fact that I, I sell at a farmer's market and usually take a fair bit of product to the market, um, I was still worried that by allowing so many more CSA members in to, to join, I was worried that I wouldn't have enough um, produce. Um, so we put a cap um, in April and, and I told people to that they'd be on the on the waiting list and that they could join for the winter CSA season. Um, and I have a, a pretty long waiting list. So um, we have um, a number of high tunnels, a number of caterpillar tunnels. Uh, I have many more employees this year than I have ever had before. 
Uh, we saw a huge increase in sales uh, pretty much starting in March. And luckily, because I already had a pretty robust website, which was designed by a local company called May Create Design um, 10, 10 years ago when they created my website, we created a form that was is used by my CSA members to sign up and to join for the CSA season. So I had an ability to create a new form that would allow for online weekly ordering. And it, it worked fine initially uh, in, the, in the beginning of March and, and into the first part of April. It was clunky and it was difficult to use and, um, but it was a very quick and very easy fix um, to you know, allow online sales to immediately start happening. And in the process of working through that, we updated our website so that I could use um, a WooCommerce system on my website. Oh, this is just a little bit. So I sell through CSA and then Farmer's Market. And we have a year round Farmer's Market, which I sell at year round. Um, and then I also sell wholesale to restaurants and grocery stores. Sorry, I backtracked a tad bit there. Um, so anyways, the WooCommerce site on my website now is very robust, um, very easy to use, very easy to update. Um, like Curtis was saying, uh, it produces a, a pack list, it produces labels, um, it really does all of the things that Harvey does, but 10 years ago, Harvey didn't exist. Um, really, you know, I only started really hearing about these online ordering platforms maybe five-ish years ago. And so moving, my, moving from my website, which already existed, to one of these new barn to door Harvey, uh, small frog central, you know, one, any of these number of different platforms, it didn't seem to make sense to me because I already had a really great website that did mostly what I needed it to do. Um, and yes, it is expensive to have a website initially created, but I've been using it for 10 years and we have updated it one time in the last 10 years. Um, and so overall, like I don't have to pay a, a sales fee. I don't have to pay a percentage of my sales to anybody like, like Harvey charges. Um, and so it just, it, it made sense for me to keep using my own website and upgrade it to WooCommerce uh to to use it for more like an, an easier online sales platform um so i have an online store i can update it very easily i can put limits on things like the summer squash for instance tomatoes and cucumbers are just starting to come on so i don't have large quantities of those yet and so i can put a limit on what will what i can sell and once that limit is met, any future orders, um, if somebody were to say select summer squash, then they get a um, they get a notice that says you know this product is sold out. Um, the site calculates all the sales tax and and a credit card processing fee, and offers multiple pickup uh, delivery, home delivery options. You know whatever the customer chooses, uh, they can they can choose. Um, it's, it's very easy for me on the back end to manage the site and to add and take away items. Um, so I guess some of the pros is that for my business and the size business that I have, um, and when I started farming, I, I felt like it was really important for me to have a really good online web presence and having a, a website was my way to do that. And so I, I feel like that my website is, it's very professional and um, uh, I don't know what else I could say about that. Um, I guess that's all.
um, the, I, I did mention that it's, um, the, the website allows me the ability to download. Um, it's a CSV file, which is super easy because I can put it into an Excel spreadsheet. And that gives me all of the information that I need about each individual order, what the person ordered. Um, you know, if they, if they had a, if they wanted to leave me a note, there's a place that they can write a specific note to me. Um, and then I am able to print labels specifically for each individual order. Um, I guess a few of the challenges are that initially uh, the, it was it, for my small farm budget, um, you know, the thought of spending four to $5,000 on setting up a website was, um, that was a lot of money. But again, you know, I spent it once and, and that's it. Um, and I do, I do use the folks at Maker. I mean, they're local, so I can call Erica as the gal's name that I work with. And if I have a question about something on the, for how to do something on the website, I can call her and ask her. And, um, and that, that type of maintenance type work that I do, that's not expensive because it's not huge chunks of time like it was to actually build and create the website in the very beginning. Um, one drawback is that like I have had to learn and to teach myself how to write, you know, code, I guess, pretty much and how to build the website and manage the website. Um, so that was, that, that took some work on my part. Um, but now I know how to do it. And so now managing the updates and changes and, and whatnot is, uh, is pretty easy. But let's say I wanted to train an employee to try to do that. Um, that's not so easy. Um, so that's, that's a challenge. And I actually would really like to be able to pass off this responsibility of managing the online store to one of my employees. But we are so thick in the middle of order taking and we take orders twice a week um, that I, I literally, I don't have time and the employee doesn't have time to learn everything that they would need to learn in order to take over the management and running of the site in you know, a somewhat efficient sort of manageable time frame. Um, it would be really easy if I were to teach somebody how to do this in the off season. Um, but right now it just seems, seems almost like it's not, not possible or not feasible to try to get somebody up to speed on, on how to do this. Um, so, so I, like I said, it does require, um, weekly maintenance and updating, um, by me because we are taking orders twice a week. Um, so those are a few of the challenges. And the other thing that I didn't initially, I, I wasn't going to talk about at all. Um, and I guess if, if people have questions about it for my CSA, I did move my original CSA setup, which has always been um, based on the traditional CSA model, which is I pack a box based on the availability of the many, many different things that we have that are growing on the farm each week. And uh, I, I would decide each week what would go into the CSA share based on the size share that the peop that people bought because there's multiple different share size options. Um, but this year I have moved to a more of a choice option and it's an app that was written by a CSA member um, that's a, a member of a friend's farm. And this was only, this, this current week right now is just our second week of using the app um, but I've only heard really good things from my CSA members and that they like it and they like how easy it is to manipulate on their end and how easy it is for them to choose um, the things that they want. Uh, but again, this is super new for me um, using this app. And the one thing that I really appreciated what Curtis said earlier about Harvey and this app does the same thing and it's been 
I literally only two weeks in, um, it was, it was super apparent to me this week when I was looking at the list of the orders of what all of my members have purchased and the amount of money assigned to each individual item and how much dollar value they are getting in their shares compared to actually how much they paid for their CSA membership and what they're paying per week. And um, that makes me feel really good because the dollar value that 95% of the members are choosing to pick and, and put into their shares each week is quite a bit more than what they actually paid. Um, and you know, that's one of the benefits of being a CSA member. Um, so I always thought that that was the case, but I didn't ever sit down and actually do the financial run the numbers. And my, this app gives me that ability to know. And, um, so I, I, when I was working on putting together this presentation, I was looking at that functionality of this app and it, um, it just made me realize, uh, what a, what a good deal my CSA members get. So anyway, I just was really going to talk about my website and the WooCommerce part of my website. So I will wrap it up. Thank you, Liz. Yeah. Um, no, that was actually very useful. Um, Can you unshare your screen, Liz? Oh, yes, I sure can. Sorry about that. No, that's okay. Yep. All right, perfect. So we're going to go into Q&As now. And um, first, let me just uh, mention a couple of things. So for the four farmers that we have, um, Millsap Farms and Oakwood Farms, they both use all natural uh, production. and. Uh, Greg and Nancy are pasture-raised broiler chickens, grass-fed beef, cattle, and sheep. And then Liz Grasnack is actually USDA organ uh, certified organic uh, vegetable fruits, eggs, and flowers. So that may be uh, something you may want to just consider when you think about touching base with these farmers, uh, if you are going to use the one-on-one -on -one consultations. Again, each of them will have, uh, have allocated, have um, committed to 20 hours each that's a total of 20 hours, not uh, 20 hours for uh, each person that consults with them. Um, then, in general, just an overview of the platforms we have seen. So, Curtis seems to have had a couple of different experiences. Um, and more recently, he mentioned that he's more into Harvey. Uh, he had used Barn to Door. And um, one thing that he did mention is that he is, so there is a considerable cost to using Harvey, but for him, it's worth it. Um, and then for Karen Scott, it's kind of at the opposite end. Uh, she's talking that she, it's a free platform, um, but um, basically it's, there's, there, there's, a way to, there's a learning curve there in order to learn the platform on your own. But uh, there seems to be some online support there that she's able to use, even though the platform itself does not offer a lot of support. Uh, but apparently from what Curtis mentioned, because of the overwhelming demand of these platforms, there's a lot of uh, these platforms are struggling with customer service. I think we can all relate to that. It doesn't just happen in the uh, farming world, apparently. Um, and then Greg and Nancy, uh, they were they had uh, they mentioned that they had support from their uh, one of their uh, their son that uh, offers them a little bit of uh, support directly. Uh, but they do use GraceCard, and they mentioned that uh, that is created by farmers. So apparently. They might have that knowledge behind and how it was created that seems to be uh, very important to them. Uh, and then Liz, uh, uh, she hired a company um, that actually created her webpage. So there's an initial investment in the webpage, uh, but then she doesn't have that extra cost throughout the, um, uh, the process that she has to pay for, for, the, for the platforms as the other ones uh, would have. So with that, uh, we have a couple of questions already. So um, the first one is for Curtis. And the question is, if you allow uh, non-CSA members to order online. So that, yeah, that's a great question. 
Um, I kind of alluded to that a little bit. So originally, uh, that was our idea with Barn to Door was was to offer sort of a side by side option um, that would allow anybody to uh, come in and buy a la carte. And what I mean by that is like, if they want to buy one bunch of green onions, fine. Or if they want to buy $75 worth of mixed produce, that's fine. Um, instead of being more boxed in by a, by a CSA share. Um, so that was the original intent. Uh, Barn to Door allowed us to do that. And that was, that was really handy, especially uh, in the midst of the kind of the peak of the COVID thing. It really allowed us to, to have tremendous sales during a time when it was pretty challenging to make sales and in, uh, in person. So that was good and useful. Um, what we are now doing and what we've done in the past, but it's kind of stepping up is Harvey uses a thing called farm share. Uh, I'm sorry, farm stand within the Harvey platform and Har farm stand is an option on a weekly basis to buy a CSA share. So it, it's not a, uh, it's not a free choice thing necessarily, although within the Harvey platform, you get a lot of choice. So once they buy a share, they can then swap things in and out. They can add things, they can take things out. Um, but it does require them to make an initial commitment, uh, either buying a, a sampler or a half or a full share. And so, uh, so that's what we're doing right now. And that seems to me like kind of a frustrating middle ground. I've, I've been around and around with this with uh, Harvey. I just really want a, a straightforward a la carte system. But that said, uh, we are still selling about somewhere around 10 to 15 extra shares a week that way. So that's nothing to sniff at. I mean, at an average cost of about $25 per share, if we're, so if they're somewhere between half and full shares, full shares being 33 and, and halves being 17. So, you know, if you figure 10 shares at uh, $25 a piece, that's $250 extra a week. That certainly adds to the bottom line. So that's where we are on that right now. We have used, uh, uh, platforms that were totally non-member specific like Barn to Door, but now we're back to using Harvey, which is member member specific, but to be part of, of Farm Stand, all they have to do is give us an email address and then they get a weekly email saying, hey, there's produce available. You can buy these three different sizes of shares. Uh, I, think, I think that answers the question. All right, thank you, Curtis. The next question uh, is um, for Karen. Um, so you work, uh, you talked about the platform uh, being free. And then, so apparently there is a learning curve there. Uh, how long did it take you to attain this learning curve? Because you mentioned that you were gonna stick to this platform. I would say, um, if I put it in terms of hours, it, it, may, it may have been a good 10 hours over a period of time, because you, you um, you start entering things and you start creating your store uh, and then, then that just prompts more questions. So I would, I would say about 10 hours. Okay, thank you. And the, the online platform, the online group that you said is available, is that usually, is that very, do you think it's reliable? You can rely on them? Yes, I think I can rely on them. It, it's, a, it's a community of users. And uh, so you get varied feedback back when, when you submit a question, but I've found it to be very useful. Uh, it, can, um, it can take a lot of time though. It, it isn't an instant response. All right, thank you, Karen. Uh, the next question is for Greg and Nancy. Uh, how are you managing Grace Card and local line for pickup at uh, the Web City Farmers Market? Okay, I'll answer that one since I'm the one that's going to market right now. Um, the local line at the farmer's market, just to compare the two, it's made more for selling individual items rather than meats, which can vary in their weight. And so we've had to do some adjusting there. Um, first, we were, you know, figuring the price of the whatever meats they ordered. And then we would, the market would have to adjust the customer's credit card to reflect, you know, either more or less uh, money. And then if it was close, you know, if it was less, I would 
put in money just in their bag to refund them, you know, the difference. And, and finally, I ended up just going with a flat rate, like for say a Kansas City strip, just a flat rate. And because the market online ordering is just for a, a short period of time. And I figured we could deal with that, you know, since it wasn't going to be an ongoing thing. Uh, as far as Gray's cart goes, that works a lot better because it's when a person orders a product or products on that, it gives them a ballpark figure of that cost, like say a Kansas City strip steak is $15 for a pound. <clears throat> well, if that steak is a little less or a little more, then I can go in that order and change, put the exact weight in there, and it will recalculate that customer's bill before their credit card is ever charged. All right, thank you, Greg. Um, the next question is for Liz. Uh, first, would you recommend the company you've used and uh, will they replicate that website for another farm? And how much did you pay for that um, webpage 10 years ago? Can you hear me? Yes. Yeah. Um, yes, I absolutely would recommend Make Create Design. They are fabulous to work with. Uh, ten, 10 years ago, I think I paid in the neighborhood of $3,500 total to have them build the site. They also had an intern do most of the work. So I think they gave me a discount. Uh, their hourly rate is, in my opinion, an astronomically high fee. <laughs> um, I think it's like $184 an hour, you know, and selling $3.50 heads of lettuce that is, you know, mind blowing to me. Um, and so I, I only call them and have them help me when I absolutely need their help. Um, but they are really great to work with. Um, but having a very good website is super expensive. No matter, you know, no matter what, it's expensive. And Liz, since they have used, so usually when, when you have to build a, a web uh, page out of scratch yeah. and then you they have to put more hours into that of course so yeah. I'm assuming they can use your um, kind of a background for other farms as well will that cut cut on the hours they will spend on a new website for another farmer I think you would have to ask them that I don't know the answer you okay. would have to call them and ask them Okay, and on the update that you had recently, um, was that also uh, a significant amount of hours that they had to put into it? No, it wasn't. Um, I think I, I think I paid them about six hundred dollars. Okay, perfect. Thank you. Yeah. Um, the next question is for all farmers, so um, let's just follow the same order in which you presented. So there are actually two kind of questions here. Um, uh, Nancy mentioned the difference between sales and food taxes. Can you kind of mention if your platform differentiates between those? Um, and then also, um, if a, a separate question, but for all, so are the farmers market managers organizations helping to promote your online platform, uh, the ones that you're participating in? And if so, how? Okay, so uh, the first part, uh, as far as taxes go, um, Harvey does not um, categorize taxes in any way. That's all on us. We just get a sales number, and then we have to work from that number. Um, and there is some work on starting to differentiate that because that would be helpful for us. Um, specifically, the way that would be helpful for us is the produce we sell. Uh, is one tax category versus the uh, anything value added is a different tax category. And until this year, we really hadn't used, sold any value added stuff through our CSA, but we are now starting to do that. Um, 
which is nice. It's a great way to, to offer some extras that people appreciate, but it does create a, a tax issue for us. So that may be something we have to figure out. Uh, well, it is something we're currently working on figuring out before this quarter ends. And then um, what was the second part, second question, Maria? So are the farmer's markets uh, like or, uh, that you are participating um, are they helping promote your direct online platforms? And if so, how? Yes, they are. At least ours, our farmer's market of the Ozarks, which is our, the market we attend, has been really good about that. Um, they've created a listing of, um, of each farm's uh, individual e-commerce site um, and have promoted that through social media and through the through the the uh, homepage of the far, of the market as well. So yeah, it's been it's been really helpful. We were at a drive-through market uh, until two weeks ago, and so uh, having the ability to get our members on and get them, I mean, getting getting our customers to be able to pre-order stuff was uh, really a big deal because otherwise the the, the drive-through was incredibly slow, and the market was quick to recognize that and to uh, to help put people's pre-order stuff out there. Uh, we have a market that does, uh, we pay percentage of daily sales. And so uh, when we do pre-orders that are delivered at market, we pay the market uh, that percentage. And, um, and so, you know, it's both in our interest and their interest to get those sales numbers up as much as we could. All right, thank you. What about you, Karen? Our farmers market, Web City Farmers Market and Empire, Joplin Empire Market are not doing anything to promote our websites um, or our online ordering. However, they do heavy promotion of their of the local line, which helps us out also because we're selling through both uh, platforms. Okay, thank you. And does um, the Square have any differentiation between the sales and food taxes by any way? Yes, it does. However, uh, Curtis brings up, uh, we've just recently started selling value added stuff on the Square website and we can assign a uh, different tax to different items. It does do that. Okay, great. Thank you so much. Um, what about uh, Greg and Nancy? You, you, I think you, you kind of mentioned that sales and food taxes differentiation. So just if you can clarify if your platform differentiates that for you. And then also the question, uh, you do sell at the Web City Farmers Market. And I, I think the, there's another one in the area. So if you want to clarify if your online sales are promoted. Okay, on the sales tax, uh, through Gray's cart, you can enter the sales tax rate for the different areas for your pickup locations. And on the market support, I believe uh, the market, like Web City, they're going as a phase out local line, they're going to at least make those customers aware of the vendors that have other options for online ordering. All right, thank you. What about you, Liz? Um, our farmer's market has done a fantastic job of promoting the farms that are offering online pre-ordering uh, prior to the Saturday farmer's market. They've, they have been offering for, I'm gonna say, probably two or more months curbside pickup uh, for anybody that places a pre-order. I do know that they're talking about uh, discontinuing that service, I think maybe at the end of this month. So maybe just for another week or two um, Saturdays, is that curbside pickup option going to be available? Um, but really from the very beginning of uh, the COVID scare, the our market really, um, did a lot to, to try and help promote farmers that were offering pre-order availability. Um, and I'm sorry, what was the other part of that question? And I don't think in your case, this matters that the difference between the sales and food taxes, because that was something you would have to, I, I would guess. Yeah. Yeah. On, yeah, on my website, and it says it, you know, in lots of places, uh, in, in many different forms that the prices on 
the website and ma making purchases that the price includes sales tax. And then I am responsible for, well, not I, my accountant <laughs> is responsible for deducting the sales tax out and making the sales tax payments. Okay, thank you. Uh, the next question I have is for, um, for Curtis. So there are two questions actually. Uh, how much time in dollar amounts do you think Harvey saves you? Uh, perhaps another way of asking that is how much selling do you have to have to compensate for the cost? So that's a, that's a great question. And um, I wish I could give a real straightforward answer to it. Um, the answer is that we have found other ways to compensate for the 10% loss. So, so interesting sort of counterpoint to Liz's um, CSA, the way her CSA works. I have always kept really close tabs on what I was giving my members. And so if I have a member who's getting a $30 share, they were getting $30 worth of produce or maybe as much as $31, maybe as little as $29.50 or something, but they were keeping, we were keeping it really close to that value. Um, and so, and, and, the, and the reason we'd done that was because that's how we were trained. Um, I think the, I think uh, Tom and Rebecca up at uh, Fair Share Farms uh, were the first people, maybe them or, or also the uh, uh, Henry, um, I can't think of his last name right now, but Henry's farm up in Illinois. Anyway, we, we went to CSA training and that's what they said. Hey, keep track of your value. Keep your value close. Bob Muth in New Jersey. Uh, and the, the idea behind that was that uh, most people, a lot of people quit CSAs because they end up with too much produce. In, in a, and I don't know if that, how universally true that is, but it's somewhat true. And so we never wanted to over, over, over um, fill our shares. And the complaints we did get at times were like, oh, what are we going to do with all this produce? So um, so what we have done is actually, and this was, again, something I got at a conference, um, uh, Ellen Polichuk said, you know what? CSA is a value-added product. CSA means you don't wait in line. You get direct communication from the farmer. You have a, a guaranteed amount of produce each week you have this special place in the in the hierarchy of the farm. You get the first strawberries, you get the first uh, sugar snap peas, you get, you know, anything that's coming out, CSA members get first whack at that. And because of that, they actually pay more, um, which is kind of, it's kind of anathema to most CSA farmers. And so I just acknowledge that up front, but that's the way ours works. People pay more. So I just added about a, depending on the size of your share, something like a 7% to a 10% uh, premium to our, uh, to our shares to compensate for the Harvey expense and, and frankly also to compensate for the other hassles of CSA. You know, if I wasn't doing CSA, I wouldn't have to walk the fields and figure out approximately how many heads of lettuce and how many uh, heads of bok choy and things I would have in the same way that I do. I would just go out and harvest everything that was available and I'd take it to market. But because I'm doing a CSA, I have that extra, you know, several hours of my week that I go spend time doing that. Um, so that, that's kind of the, that is the deeper philosophical question behind it, I guess, that maybe leads to a practical thing. Um, Harvey has taken almost all of the customer service effort off of my shoulders. I think in the past I was spending something like four hours a week, maybe a little less than that, but probably close to that, answering uh, members' questions and, and so on out of 175 member CSA uh, with emails and phone calls and texts and so on. And I'm down to usually uh, an hour a week or less on that nowadays. So that's a pretty significant increase for me or, or decrease for me, an improvement for me. Um, this year, it's been a little different because we have a huge influx of new members. And so there have been more questions. And also because Harvey has fallen behind on customer service stuff just due to the overwhelming demand. So, but uh, I hope that answers the question. Yeah, that's great. Uh, actually, they're thanking you for elaborating on that. <laughs> um, and if you could share your link for FarmStand, is that possible? Maybe in the chat or we can email that later. Someone is asking for that. Yeah, you bet. I can make that happen. Great. And then we have one last question, to, one last question which is actually pretty relevant here for everyone. If you can just briefly respond to that. Um, if you had to choose, what is your biggest complaint with your platform of choice? Okay, so I'll start that. Uh, my biggest complaint with uh, Harvey is that uh, we still don't have an a la carte option. So once somebody has bought in, once somebody's either a CSA member or they've bought a share through FarmStand, 
Um, they now have the option to purchase all the extras and add-ons and tra trade outs and all that sort of thing that they want to do. But I really would be okay with just having a switch to flip to say, it's now kind of free game. You know, anybody can go come in and buy whatever they want and, and have it delivered on this day or, you know, pick up at the farm on this day. I really am okay with that. And, um, uh, Philosophically, this has been kind of a tug of war with me and Harvey, uh, specifically with Simon, uh, who just really is committed to the to the philosophy of CSA being this long term commitment of a customer to the CSA program. And I appreciate that and I understand his his desire to do that. And so I, I don't, you know, while it's my biggest complaint, I also will say it's also something that I really appreciate that he gets see the heart of CSA, which is about this relationship. And that's what his mission is about. But I do also think that within the next six months or so, we're going to see a full scale a la carte program that'll come out of that. So, mostly because so many of us farmers have asked for it. All right, thank you, Karen. I'm sorry, what was the question? So what is your biggest complaint from the platform you use? I don't think I really have any very large complaints. Um, I think I've learned everything that I need to learn. The platform is adding free functionality all the time. But again, you know, we are a very small farm uh, in this corner of Southwest Missouri. Um, there aren't a lot of CSAs here. Uh, most of our business is at the market. Uh, so, uh, you know, it, it works very well for us, I think. All right, thank you. So uh, just following up on what you mentioned before, it's probably the learning curve that might be the biggest investment in that since it's free. Exactly. And, you know, and as I said, I, I think I've learned all that I need to know. Um, but, but there's a cost associated with that. Just as, you know, Curtis was talking about, I could be out there, um, you know, harvesting more stuff or, you know, seeding more lettuce or, you know, doing this or doing that instead of, uh, trying to figure out software. Um, so, you know, it really is kind of just a balancing of, you know, where you're at with your farm and what your goals are um, and uh, uh, just weighing that. How much you want to spend, you know, monetarily or time-wise because there is a cost. Thank you, Karen. What about you, Greg and Nancy? I'd say I don't have a complaint on Grace card. I have a complaint on myself, though, that I don't have enough time to put into it as I should. But uh, the options that Grace card have, since we're meat producers and it was developed by meat producers, they really have their bases covered there. And um, I'm really pleased with all the options they have and a lot of the options I don't even use at this point. But anybody that might be considering it, uh, if they would just go to grazecart.com, there's a short video there that kind of gives you an overview of that platform and it's uh, really worth looking at. All right, thank you, Greg. What about you, Liz? Um, oh, I would say probably the biggest thing is, is that learning how to, how to use and do programming. Um, I mean, I by no means would say that I am a proficient uh, programmer for websites. I mean, absolutely not. When it gets to the really nitty gritty of the website, I do not know how to do that stuff. But I have had to learn a lot um, in order to be able to do what I am currently doing on the website. Um, so it's taken time and time during it, number one, during a time of year that we don't have time <laughs> and then also on top of that a time of year where we I think most vegetable farmers especially seem to be extra extra crazy busy because of the increase in demand um, so that that's been the biggest challenge great thank you if anybody quickly wants to add on silver linings that um, on the topic today but I think in general, it, it, from what all you all mentioned on the complaints, I think in general, the time is always an issue in modern world. <laughs> um, so there is an investment and whatever you go, you're going to have to spend less time farming, which is what farmers like to do. But any silver linings any of you four want to add? 
I'll just say it, that, that it's opening up a new sales channel. Oh yeah. For Absolutely those people for that, yeah, that don't come to the market for, for one reason or another, or, you know, don't opt into a CSA, it's a brand new sales channel. Okay. That's the biggest thing for me. I mean, when the farmer's market, when my weekly farmer's market sales plummeted, my online sales skyrocketed and I was selling more in a week than I ever did at the farmer's market. So, um, and, but from customers that were not customers of mine before because they didn't shop at the farmer's market and they weren't CSA members. So yeah, so that's been great. Yeah. And I'll just say that I think, you know, if we're not, moving toward at least some significant online sales, we're going to get left behind. If you just look at the, the numbers, I mean, I, I think Nancy said it really well, but you know, things are, this is the direction things are going. So we've got to be ready to, to move that way. We've got to do the things that Amazon does well while not, you know, selling our souls to be Amazon, frankly. So, so we, and we can do that. We can still be local farmers and make connections with our customers and yet also give them the convenience of point and click. And, and then, you know, that's good for all of us as long as it's, as long as it maintains that relationship. Thank you. Greg and Nancy, you have anything before we close here? I think Curtis hit the nail on the head. It just gives you another, outlet for your products. Okay, great. I, I think nobody can argue that the farmer's market is uh, more than just going and buying your food is a community aspect, right? So people like that community thing of going and meeting people. And But the online sales uh, offer the convenience that not, not, if, not everybody can make it every Saturday to the market or, or Wednesdays or whatever. So it definitely that complement and, and it's, it's necessary apparently from the trends that are going on. So with that, we're going to close today. I thank all of our um, presenters. Uh, we are going to be sending emails to the participants with um, uh, the handout uh, that we will put together uh, with a summary of the present or what pre they presented today. And then also we will be sending some more information on how to get in touch and uh, schedule those one-on-one -on -one, uh, consultations. Um, and then if you have any other questions, you can always email me. You'll have my email. And um, there is an exit poll if you want to fill it in, that would be great. And I hope you all have a great rest of the week. And, um, and thank you for participating.